So today uh, we're going to be talking about elasticities and marginal effects. So I know that in the past I've talked about these two concepts uh, separately, but today, um, you know, I want to talk about them to see how is that they are related. So elasticities and marginal effects. First, let's look at the you know, graphical analysis to you know, remind you. So remember, when we were talking about um, a marginal effect, or the way that we define a marginal effect, so we said that it was the effect of an additional unit of x on y. So if we have let's say a nonlinear model. So we say that the marginal effect is the effect of a change in x equal to one unit. Okay, so we have a one unit change in x and so the marginal effect measures what's the effect of that one unit uh, of that additional unit of x on y. So this is one unit, and we said that the way that we measured the change in y, it was also measured in units of y. Okay, yeah? so that was, and <clears throat> remember that is graphically what we call a marginal effect. And um, mathematically, you remember the marginal effect, we said that was the derivative, so this is dy dx. So now let's look at what we call an elasticity. Okay, so this is the graph for an elasticity. Remember, so the definition of an elasticity, so in words, Okay, and so let's try to graph something that kind of looks similar. We say that an elasticity measures um, a 1% increase in x. So we're looking here in the graph, a change in x equal to 1%. I forgot to add here x and y. And we measure the change in y also in percentage, so changing y in percentage. Okay, so again, as you can see here in both cases, so when we talk about marginal effects or elasticities, in both cases we are looking at what is the effect of some change in x on y. When we're talking about the marginal effect, we look at the effect of an additional unit of x on y, and the change in y is measuring units, and when we're looking at elasticities, um, you know, what we're talking about is the change in x measure, it's a 1% change in x, and the change in y is also measured in percentage. Okay, so in words, so the marginal effect, say that is the effect of a one unit unit increase in x, on y, okay? And so remember, the change on y is measured in units. And in words, the elasticity, we said that that's the effect of a 1%, 1% change in x on y. And then the change in y is measured in percentage. Okay, so again, as you can see here, the main point I want to make here is that these two concepts are related. So marginal effects, to summarize that, so marginal effects, so that's ME and elasticities are related concepts.
they both measure how changes in X affect Y. They both measure how changes in X affect Y. Okay, so that's something that we know. Now, something that is less transparent, or, I mean, less obvious, you know, when we look at these concepts in the graph, is that actually if we know the marginal effect, we can calculate the elasticity. And if we know the elasticity, we can calculate the marginal effect. I mean, you know, basically the calculation, what the calculation involves is this change in units. Instead of using the regular units of X and Y, we can use percentages. So, if we know one, and I refer to marginal effect or elasticity, we can calculate the other. Okay, so how is that we're going to go about doing that? Okay, so let's, I'm going to write down like a little table here. So let's look at the concept, and here let's look at the formula, and you will see how that works. So the concept, let's look at the marginal effect, and I guess I'm going to write down here, marginal effect. Okay, so the formula for the marginal effect, as I showed you previously, that's the derivative dy dx, uh, something that you learn in your math class. For the elasticity, and I'm sure that you have seen this in a microeconomic class, so the elasticity of y with respect to x, and you know, we are going to call it this e, that's, a, that's a epsilon. Um, and the formula is the y dx, which is again is the derivative, times x divided by y. If you want to have um, you know, some sort of intuition, we can rewrite this formula this way, so that you see that. Yeah, well, let me see. So I should have for the numerator, I should have dy divided by y. So you see one way to think about it is that you are dividing the change on y divided by y, so that's kind of like a proportional change in y divided by the corresponding proportional change in x. Okay, so that's kind of that formula. But another way to write this elasticity is the marginal effect times x divided by y. Now, this formula here shows the fact that, um, you know, we're calculating. So remember, these two concepts, the marginal effect, you know, the, the derivative, and also the elasticities, are concepts that apply at the specific point in, in your curve. Remember, especially, and we talk about these things, so remember, in the, in the context of, of nonlinear models, remember that the marginal effects are not constant. Okay, so in the case of um, elasticities, that's kind of what we are also trying to emphasize. So it depends specifically at which point in the curve you are calculating your elasticity of your uh, marginal effect. So that's kind of what's going on there. That's why we have this as a specific point of x and a specific point in y, where you know a specific point is that you are going to be calculating that, that elasticity. So with these two formulas, well, it's obvious that if we see that the elasticity is the marginal effect divided by x divided by y, then if we want to calculate the marginal effect, we just solve for me, and that's equal to the elasticity times y divided by x. And this is kind of, again, this is mathematically summarized that idea that, you know, you can calculate the effects of x on y using units 
or using percentages. Okay, so now that, you know, you know um, we have cleared this concept of the relationship between elasticities and marginal effects, let's go and let's do a summary of the interpretation of the coefficients, marginal effects, and elasticities in linear, quadratic, and log models. So let's start with our um, linear model. And in the linear model, we have y equal to beta naught plus beta 1x plus mu. So the interpretation of um, you know, beta 1, remember we said that, that beta 1 tells us um, or measures the effect of a, a, you know, an additional unit of x uh, on y. So beta 1, we said that 1 additional unit of x changes y by beta 1 units. Okay. So the marginal effect, so remember, so this is constant, that derivative, that's a constant because we have a linear model, and the elasticity is going to be given by beta 1 divided by x over y. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm applying you know, this formula that I gave you towards the end. How do you go from elasticity to the marginal effect? Since the, I know that the marginal effect in that case was beta 1. So I just plug it in in that formula. And that's how I came up with this formula for the elasticity in the context of the linear model. For the quadratic model, and then for the quadratic model. So remember, we said that the beta 1 didn't have a very uh, you know, kind of useful interpretation. Let's look at the marginal effect. We focus on the marginal effect. And we gave the formula for the marginal effect. It was equal to beta 1 plus beta 2x. So once again, for the elasticity, the general formula, and I'm going to write it down here so that you have it in front of you. So we say that elasticity is equal to the marginal effect times x divided by y. So that's so to calculate the elasticity. We use that marginal effect for this model. It should be a 2 times x over y. Okay. So that's the marginal effect. So for the log log model, remember we have the log of y equal to beta 1 plus beta naught plus beta 1 log of x plus the error. The way that we interpret this set at a 1% increase in x changes y by beta 1%, and that's actually an elasticity. So we know that the log-log model, uh, let me see, I think I touched something. Let me save it. Uh, it's giving me some trouble here. Okay, let me see. something so 
Again, so we were talking about the um, log log model. So a 1% increase in K in X changes Y by beta 1%. So this is actually the elasticity is the coefficient. So remember that's kind of by definition. And if we want to calculate the marginal effect, so remember we also said that the marginal effect is going to be equal to the elasticity times Y divided by X. So that's what we'll do here. So the marginal effect will be equal to the elasticity, which is equal to y, to beta 1 times y divided by x. So that should be the formula if we want to calculate the marginal effect in the context of a log-log model. And then we have these level-log models. And they are slightly different. And I'll kind of talk about that. Because they really don't provide an elasticity a pure elasticity or a pure marginal effect. Because remember here, since we have the log of x, we look at a 1% increase in x changes y by beta 1 over 100 units. Okay, so if you think about this thing here, we have the change in x is measuring percentage, but the change in y is measuring unit. So actually, this is what's called like a semi-elasticity. Okay, and I don't want to get uh, to talk too much about that, but you see, it's kind of like a combination of both a marginal effect and elasticity. The formula, and then I'm not going to provide a proof, but I mean, if you are interested, the marginal effect is just beta one divided by y. And the elasticity, the pure elasticity, would be beta 1 divided by y. And I made an error. So actually here, the marginal effect should be beta 1 divided by x. Okay. Once we do those calculations, then the marginal effect is going to be measuring the effect of an additional unit of x on y, measuring units. And the elasticity will measure the effect of a 1% increase in x on y. And y is going to be measuring units. And for the log level model, it's kind of we have a similar situation. Remember, we have the log of y, which is equal to beta naught plus beta 1x plus zero term. So here we have a one unit increase in x. changes y by e to the beta 1 minus 1 times 100%. Okay, and then that's an interpretation. And remember, when, when beta 1 is small, we can use that approximation. Um, and in terms of the um, marginal effect, the marginal effect is given by beta 1 times y. And for the elasticity, the elasticity is given by beta 1 times x. Okay? And, and I guess something that I kind of forgot to mention is that, again, you know, once again, this, what we get here in the context of the log level model is also like a semi-elasticity. It's a combination of a marginal effect. And an elasticity because we look at the, the change in x in units and the change in y is given in percentage. Okay, so to get pure marginal effect and pure elasticities, we need to apply those formulas. Okay.